Hi, I hope everybody is doing well. Welcome. We're going to be learning today how you prove that triangles are similar using what's called the angle angle or AA similarity postulate. Very simple concept and I think you'll catch on very quickly. I um, want to start off with kind of explaining what the postulate is, but doing so in the context of a, a kind of a real world problem that you could do. What I've got here, you see, is a person and then a tree drawn. And what I'm going to do is we're going to be talking about a way that you can use what's called indirect measurement to find the height of an object such as a tree or a flagpole. That's another common um, math problem that you'll see. And the way I'm going to do that is this. We're going to be using the sun and shadows in order to find out what the height of this tree is. Okay, now in this picture it would be impossible to draw it this way, but in real life the sun is so high compared to objects on the ground that we would say if a sun ray hits an object or any two objects it hits them at the same angle meaning that if I draw these two lines and pretend these are sun rays right here and right here the angle that the sun ray forms with each of those vertical objects the person and the tree those angles have to be equal so this angle right there has to be congruent to this angle right there All right. Now the idea here is that those sun rays create two right triangles that are similar to one another. Now I say they're right triangles because we assume that the person standing on the ground is standing vertically and we also assume that the tree is standing vertically. And can do the triangles kind of look similar to one another? No? In fact they are. And what we're going to be learning in this lesson today is this that if you can ever prove that two different triangles have two pairs of congruent angles, such as these two angles and these two angles, it automatically means the triangles are similar. All right, so how could we then find out what the height of the tree is? Well, here are some measurements that somebody could actually make. The person knows their height, and we're saying that's 150 centimeters, and let's just say then that they measure their shadow. Right there at the end you know, this person is blocking the sunlight right there, so there's shadow right here. Um, right there at the tip of the sun ray, it'd be possible for somebody to measure the length of their shadow, right? So let's just suppose that they do so and they found out that their shadow is 90 centimeters. Well, another measurement they could easily make is the length of the tree's shadow right here. So suppose they do find the length of the tree's shadow, and it is 450 centimeters. All right, well, since we know that these two triangles are similar, then it could be real easy, or it would be real easy, to use a proportion in order to find the height of the tree, this distance right there. Can you see that, how that would be done? All right, you just make this simple proportion. You say the height of the person is to the length of their shadow as the height of the tree is to the length of its shadow all right, cross multiply, you've got the height of the tree. And the height of the tree turns out to be 750 centimeters. All right, now I want to talk about how you can measure the height of an object indirectly, but the more important takeaway here for this lesson is that if two angles of one triangle are congruent to two angles of another triangle, then the triangles are similar. And there's a postulate that tells you that, and that postulate is called the angle-angle similarity postulate. So. Let's suppose then that in these two triangles that angle A is congruent to angle D and angle C is congruent to angle F. That alone guarantees that the two triangles are similar. All right. For one thing, don't the third angles have to be congruent to one another if the first two pairs of angles are congruent? And then for another, with triangles only, it turns out as long as all the angles are congruent to one another, corresponding angles are congruent to one another, that the sides are automatically proportional. It doesn't work that way in quadrilaterals or higher numbers of sides on polygons, but it does for triangles. All right, so let me write out the theorem in the context of this picture. Or the postulate, rather. If angle A is congruent to angle D and angle C is congruent to angle F, then the two triangles are similar to one another. All right, and so the new skill that I need you to have in this section is just to be able to analyze two triangles, see do they have two pairs of congruent angles or do they not, and if they do, conclude that they're similar and do whatever else the question asks involving the similar triangles. 
in the rest of this video, we're just going to do two examples in which you're going to determine whether the two triangles are similar. And if they are, you're going to write a similarity statement. Okay, well, you're going to notice in both of the pictures, here's one of them, here's the other one, that I didn't give you any side lengths whatsoever because all you need to do is compare the angle measures. All right, so can we prove that the two triangles in this picture are similar to one another? Well, first of all, can you spot the two triangles? We've got a smaller triangle inside of a larger triangle there. Those are the two triangles that we're talking about. Can we prove that they have any pairs of angles that are congruent? Well, actually, we can prove, based on the information I've given you, that they have three pairs of congruent angles. All right, you're going to notice, first of all, that the two triangles have a pair of sides that are parallel to one another, right there and right there. Segment PQ is parallel to segment VW, which would mean that the corresponding angles formed by those parallel lines in each of the other two sides, the transversals, would have to be congruent to one another. All right, so angle P is congruent to angle WVR, and angle Q is congruent to angle VWR. So, based on that alone, we can say, yes, the triangles are similar. And then you want to, of course, make the similarity statement where you write the corresponding parts in order. Triangle PQR is similar. All right, we went there, there, there. To triangle VWR. By the angle-angle similarity postulate. All right, now let's take a look at the next picture here. Again, I've got a triangle inside of a triangle, and we want to know, are the two triangles similar? And they definitely don't look like it right now. Uh, and, you know, like in the last picture, you know how we had the one side of one triangle that was parallel to another side of another triangle? Well, this and this are clearly not parallel to one another. Doesn't mean that they're not similar, though. However, one thing I didn't look at in the last picture, and I'm going to go back to it real quick, is the third pair of angles within those triangles. Do you notice how angle R was part of both triangles? So we could have said that it was congruent to itself by the reflexive property. Well, we've got that same kind of deal going on here in this triangle. If you look at the smaller triangle and the larger triangle, they both contain angle L. So that's one pair of congruent angles congruent by the reflexive property. Then to see, do they have any more pairs of congruent angles? We're going to need to find a third angle measure in each triangle. Well, 50 and 70 adds up to 120, and if you subtract 120 from 180, you're going to get 60 degrees. So, do you see how this angle and this angle ended up being congruent to one another? You could find out the angle in is 70 degrees, it turns out. And so, since there's two pairs of congruent angles within the triangles, we know that the triangles are similar. Now, be careful with the similarity statement here, but we do know, yes, they are similar. I'm going to call the, I'm going to Make my similarity statement where I named the big triangle first. Triangle LTS is similar to, and here's why I'm saying be careful. Just make sure you get the corresponding parts in order. If you look at the small triangle, you would automatically, I hope, realize that angle L from the small triangle corresponds with angle L from the larger triangle. But when we look at angle T, oh, you know what? I named the smaller triangle first, didn't I? My fault. All right, so this is the smaller triangle. When I look at angle T in the smaller triangle, that doesn't correspond with angle N, does it? Because that's not a 60 degree angle. It corresponds with angle M over there. All right? And then angle S would correspond with angle N. So those are the similar triangles. That's using the angle-angle similarity postulate. Very simple to do. Thanks for watching, guys.